have, I have, I have about ten messages here. Yes. I should not come to your program. I know that you're totally against me. I know. And I'm here. I told them I said, I don't want to think people who are against me. I know. I know. So, guys, for the fact that Peter Obi is known to be very gentle, you know, sometimes, you know, he can be so decisive. And as a leader, he knows how to stand up to the occasion. So, guys, we all know that there was this town hall meeting that Peter Obi and his vice attended. So this lady, the anchor there, the person that, you know, interviewed them, uh, there is this speculation that she hates Peter O.B., as in she's not a fan of Peter O.B. And the way this, you know, the way the interview went was not really, uh, you know, it wasn't that funny because there were some questions that she kept throwing at Peter O.B., which, which are not really what we are talking about at the moment. That bring the major contenders for Nigeria's presidency face to face with the electorate that will decide who gets the top job. Again, I am Adria Ahmed, your anchor this evening, and today we're in conversation with the candidate of the Labour Party. Mr. Peter Gregory Obi is a businessman and also a two-time governor of Anambra State. Born 61 years ago in Onicha, the state capital, his professional career saw him venture into the world of corporate finance, where he held a number of executive positions. In 2003, Mr. Obi went to court where he challenged the outcome of the governorship elections he contested under the umbrella of the All Progressives Grand Alliance Party, ABGA. It took three years in court, but he was announced winner of the polls. Seven months after he was sworn in, he was impeached by the state's legislators. He challenged his impeachment in court and was reinstated. In 2019, Mr. Obi lost at the polls as the vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. Today, he offers himself for election as Nigeria's next president on the platform of the Labour Party. His running mate is Dr. Yusuf Datibaba Ahmed, a Nigerian economist and politician who served as senator for Kaduna North from 2011 to 2012 and as a member of the House of Representatives from 2003 to 2007. Born 53 years ago in Zaria, Kaduna State, he spent some time in banking and finance before venturing into politics. In 2018, he contested and lost the presidential primaries of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. In July this year, he was named as running mate to Labour Party's presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi. Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Obi and Dr. Dati Ahmed for saying yes to the invitation to attend this town hall. We don't take your presence here for granted and I'm sure our viewers are very pleased that you said yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Um, just a few things to note as we begin this conversation. In addition to people in the room who will be asking questions of the candidates, we have six remote locations across six geopolitical zones. And over the next course of the next two hours, we will hear from all of them. We have also collated questions sent to us via email and our social media platforms. And we'll try and get answers to as many of them as possible from our candidates. It is important that everyone who is asking a question state their name clearly and always be on point as we must be mindful of time to ensure we get as many people to participate as possible. Okay, so... Two hours, a lot to get through. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> just to dive straight into it, um, there are 18 people who are presenting themselves to Nigerians saying we are going to be the best president and vice president. Why should Nigerians elect you, the duo, the two of you? Well, it's for Nigerians to first try to scrutinize and look at our past, who we are, where we're coming from, even where we're promising, and be able to verify whether the things we're saying we're going to do based on the past, can we deliver them? I mean, that's sort of like a very generic statement, but you are convinced you're the right people. And so I'm saying, what are the things that make you stand out from the other 18 people that are contesting? But maybe you 
even from the front runners, the sort of six people that we are talking to in this town hall. But like I said before, in the question of trust, if you say you're going to do, for example, if somebody said, I'm going to fight corruption, it is important to scrutinize, we know the parameter of measuring corruption perception in this, for example, you know, in terms of nepotism, in terms of managing public assets and using them for the benefit of the people. Can we check where the person is coming from? And if somebody says that we will set the path that you made, like you mentioned in introduction, is an economist, this part built a business, is running a university and everything. So if you say that I'm going to do something in education, you say, well, listen, we are doing this. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm going to do what are these people doing? They've created wealth and managed resources. There are so many things you need to verify and say, well, based on this, mm -hmm. maybe they will be able to. Okay. So maybe what we should do to make it easier for Nigerians is take some of the biggest issues facing the country and see if we can dive into them and what your ideas are regarding how to solve those problems. Starting perhaps with the biggest in, in the eyes of many people and which is supposed to be the speciality of the two of you, which is the economy. Um, we have a um, big deficit in our budgets, for example. Um, we are consuming things that are imported. We're not you know, a very productive country as things stand. The currency is in free fall. A whole lot of things happening with the economy. So, um, from day one, what are the sort of things that you'll be looking at to rescue the Nigerian economy? If you look at all the part, all of us, we are the only people who have decided that we're going to move the country from consumption to production. Because country is not a productive country. And the economy is at the base of all our problems. Yes, we have a security problem, but it can link it directly to the economy. Mm -hmm. Because when you have over 100, like you just come out of India, when you have over 130 million people living in poverty, you're about to have class. Mm -hmm. Because when people don't know where the next meal will come from, they become a security risk. So you're going to have class. So dealing with that, like you said, first is to look at where is the country. Come, you need to deal with the issue of food, food production. You need to look at how to feed the country. That is the given. Considering that today, as we say, we say we are aware, the greatest assets, physical assets of this country, is the all cultivated land in the north. But it still doesn't answer the question of the how. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So, what do you mean by that? For us, instead of the issue of which deficit. Thank you. If you let me take 2021 budget. In 2021 budget, it's about 21 trillion. With a deficit of about 11 trillion. Hmm. In that component of 11 trillion, you have about 6 Plus million, yeah. six trillion the subsidy. All these are plus million. By then you remove subsidy. You have that because I believe that subsidy must go. Okay, and and we have to have been told I have to take a break. When we come back, we we'll talk about whether the removal of subsidy is in line with the ethos of your party and the principle which which we go because we see them say that subsidy will go but there are conditions so we'll dive into that conversation shortly after this break don't go away <laughs> Dyer Media in association with Kabbalah Entertainment presents The Cat Gate, a presidential town hall media series.
Budget presidential candidates of the six leading political parties tell us about their plans for the country. Joe Kadari Amore has been with us in the world of these candidates from the 17th to the 23rd of November 2022. This very important program will be streamed on FRCN, Radio Now, DST, NTA, Facebook, YouTube, and Google. This is a time where we do you shouldn't miss. Tune in. Let's hear from the candidates. Welcome back. We are watching the candidates and we are in conversation with the candidates of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi and Dr. Dati Ahmed. Baba Welcome Ahmed. back. Baba Baba Ahmed. Ahmed. <laughs> Sorry? Baba Ahmed, you want me to say the full thing? Apologies. So you were explaining um, where you thought you could start to get saving as president and you were talking about subsidy removal. If you can sort of explain a little bit not, more. Not saving, but how to reduce deficit. Deficit, yes. It's a good question. Okay. If you remove that, you have your deficit. And your question is, it is not in line with labor position. Right. So, so what we have heard from labor um, shortly after you made the initial statement about the removal of um, subsidy is that they would they think in terms of it has to have refineries have to be working. You have there has to be certain condition. Labor's position is that the removal you have to explain the alternative right. or how you're going to do to be able to increase in price. And that is in place. But then, today we have then the telephone almost 90% complete. Mm -hmm. And we have some other modern refiner that are coming and everything, which you can, as quickly as possible, support for their completion and support other new ones that are coming up. So that removal alone will not immediately again something that you can do as quickly as possible and be able to still have the same product competitively priced that we are in September. And then use the resources because I can't wait to say that what you have today as subsidy for me is organized crime. Mm. And you can't continue that. Yes, I think many Nigerians would agree with you that. You can't, you can't continue with that. So you can deal with them. Labor is not against subsidy removal. <laughs> they are against, if you're going to remove it, there must be something you're putting in place in order to be able to manage what is going to be done. I'm not going to do aggressively. And that is why that will remove it. Deal with the other components of this chorus card, like be able to bring the rule of law and manage corruption and everything, you'll be able to bring the deficit down. Okay. I, I will come back to that. I want to bring um, Dr. Baba Ahmed in here because he's also an economist. Um, when we look at um, some of the utterances that you and Mr. Obi have made around the way you're going to turn this country around, it seems to be market-driven, capitalistic, and the Labour Party calls itself a socialist party. So there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect between your ideology and that of the party you're representing at the polls. Are we misunderstanding this? Is your ideology very close to the labor ideology, which tends to be socialist by their own saying, based on the um, what they say about themselves in the documents we've read? The ideologies have been completely misunderstood. I beg to say, labor is not, has never been a socialist uh, inclination. I can quote them. And the document I have. No. The uh, way they describe themselves. When you speak about the founding principles of yes. communism and socialism, yeah. uh, what we have as labor um, is uh, not resting on those principles. Right. Uh, the labor, as we have it in the context of parties, are those from the welfareist state 
Now, when Ferris began with an economist called, forgive me, I can't remember the name right now, um, in the 50s, Margaret Thatcher, for example, made a huge success uh, out of welfareism and uh, labor politics in the UK. She was a conservative. She was a conservative, but the labor unions grew powerful and uh, made a success uh, of their drive during her era. Um, these market-driven strategies of any government, including China and Russia, are never at loggerheads or against the principles of what we call labor. There is no contradiction. Okay. Uh, anything okay. there is difference from welfareist doctrines and then the principles of communism and socialism okay. that have proven incapable of standing the test of time. Okay. Let's go back to the details of the how. So we've talked about I'm removing subsidy, I'm using modular refinery just. Yeah, 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 what would be your position? Are you going to go for a unified um, foreign exchange regime? Will it be a staggered thing that you are going to do? How are you going to deal with this disparity when it comes to Naira and the value of the Naira and how to sort of give it a little bit more oomph, if you like? Well, what you need to do is to look at the issue of why is Naira weak? That's where I'm starting. The Naira is weak. Because of you know, the weakness and strongness of your currencies, I mean, by your reserve. Because they have no reserve, they are as weak. And no reserve is driven by no export. You don't have enough export that is bringing in foreign revenue. And that's where you have to look at all the exchange you are doing there, everything. If you have the right export component of everything, which is why I say the country is not productive. If the country is productive and doing what they are supposed to do, you won't even have all this issue with that because the currency will be strong. Mm. You can't have a huge country like Nigeria without with the level of export we have today. Last year, that's true in the other our total export is 18.9 trillion naira, which at official rate is about 47 billion dollars. At the rates anybody can get, about 650 is about under 30 billion. There's no way a country of this size can have that number with the level, and I want you to allow me to give you an example of where it is. So, there's no way we can have that. We are 210 million people living on 923,000 square kilometers of land. In Syria, it's 22,000 square kilometers. So if you minus them from us, we have 900,000 left. Yeah. There are about 8.9 million people. It's called 9 million. So if we give them 10 million people, we have 210 million people left. The export life is. 59.8 billion dollars. To rise when we look for that number, countries of our size. How is where we are. Let me tell you how. Let me tell you, countries of our size. Let's put a country like Vietnam. Vietnam export last year is over 350 billion. 100 million people, which is half of our population. Yeah. Living on 331,000 square kilometers, which is the third of our land, Incredible. what do they do? Vietnam total export, 90% is manufactured group, which is electronics, test, everything. Ah, you have to go back, first 
I said, you have to deal with the issue of eating your food. Right? If today you secure Nigeria, put serious effort to secure Nigeria, and your farmers go back, heads of state to the Bank of Agriculture, mm. fund can support agriculture meaningfully. Really yeah. The way it should be. Mm. We are doing math empty land in the north. We become productive. Okay. And I I want to we will come back again to the hub because I have questions around the ways around that. power. But the audience, you know this is a town hall, it's not okay. a QA. Yes. I want to try and bring in questions from people in the audience and also people working from the house. So we are taking audience questions. Um, there's a gentleman in green, one in white, and another one in green over there. We'll take about four and then come back. We've, I think they've given you something to write. Okay. Yes, and everything. So let's start with the gentleman in green. Yes, by the right-hand side here. No, there's a gentleman here, yes. We start here. We will get to all of you, I promise. Please introduce yourself. Good evening. My name is Dr. Nyakachi Unubogu. Um, I'm a marketing professional in around Nigeria. And the questions I'm going to ask you are not around the economy. Um, the question I'm going to ask is around Nigeria. The biggest challenge we have today, apart from economy, is building a united, indivisible nation. One that we'll all be part of. And when we see what's happening in the elections, there's a lot of mistrust, there's a lot of backbiting, big brain, and and it just seems that the election electionary season is making it worse for us. I'm going to ask you a very controversial but direct question. Would Tito Obi and Dr. Dati Baba Med be willing in the interest of Nigeria to work with any of that any of the other two candidates to ensure that we build call it a government of national unity, a government that eliminates the, the big pain and the fight we have today in this political space. Will you be able to because at the end of the day that is what we want as a nation? A strong, free individual. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you me. very much. The next question, please. Yes, there's a mic on that side. So if we go that road, because there are like two, three people there. Yes, sir. Thank please you. don't forget to tell us who you are. Um Master Day for and Kadera is still looking good train. I did say to Lancy, Mr. Peter will be the rock, the man generating the mud balls right now. I can almost say that what I heard in the news today when I met um, we seem to be speculating that there could be a runoff. I can almost place for the fact that you are in the race. Almost see that. Um, and that's, um, for that, I've, I've dropped on you a lot, sir. I've heard many things you've said, and there is a type, no doubt. But then, um, I asked, have you embraced climate change, global warming, um, greenhouse effect? And why have I asked? I read recently how that the president of um, Uganda, Museveni, His Excellency, how is he going to tackle that if he believes in that? And I'm just thinking aloud, with respect to the Vice President, B, you run a private investment. Won't there be a clash of interest with ASU? Your university must thrive, your personal investment must thrive, but then ASU too must be solved. So how do you go about this? Thank, thank, thank you. The person next to him, please. Good evening. My name is Sabota Sadiq. My question is very direct, and um, I would like to um, um, it's a bit of to answer it directly about one person. The day after uh, Manamba takes your law, to assume you to see your mood and style of campaign, his own town was attacked by PCN. How does this portray your team to ensure freedom of expression without fear of being um, made or killed? Private tragedy, if you're mad the president, oh, please, we, we... you will criticize you. Are we going to be saved? Like, are we, you know, are we going to be saved? That's the question. Thank you. And one last question, and we'll come back to you. Okay, I think we're done for now. Okay, so, um, questions to both you and Dr. Baba Ahmed as well. Maybe we can start with the one of um, how you um, the mistrust, and perhaps maybe what we should ask is how will you unify Nigeria, and would you be willing to go into a government of national unity? That was the first question. If you read, have you 
cela à certains points importants dans le first one. Le section à unite majeur. Il est un commitment to ensure that the to ensure the security of life and property of Nigerians and to show a united and one Nigeria. How? By, by ensuring that it is equity, justice, and we is following the rule of law. If you check on more transfers and everywhere, or Party Baba Netson, you will not see where we made statements like don't vote for this people because they're from here, or statements like somebody said, consent people are back to where it's coming from. We are people who have all over the place. I come from the southeast, I live in Lagos, live in the southeast, in the region, travel everywhere, and I've maintained. Nobody should vote for me because I'm from the South East or vote for me because of my poor or anything. The South East will come over it. But back our record. I will maintain so. And our backgrounds fix so. And I believe, and I've lived it. I said it today. Most people, as governor, the closest person to me is my ADC. My ADC is from Khan. I always say, is the best policeman I've ever met. We remain close to today. The investment are dealing with other countries. And so is me. So, and all of us, I think, tend to generally understand that the background to peace in most societies is respect for the rule of law. Yes. Right? And Nigeria suffers direly from the fact that actually the rule of law doesn't seem to apply evenly or equally. And, you know, there's impunity all over the place. So the question again is how? How are you going to move a country that is used to doing things a certain way, both in terms of the institutions that are charged with enforcing rule of law, but also the culture of the people who are used to breaking laws willy-nilly? I'm not clear about the how. <laughs> like your judiciary. supposed to do things based on equity and justice. Mm. It's even enshrined in our constitution, for example, where we talk about national character, everything. What should do these based on that? You will see it. What should show, of course, we're going to serve where we're going to happen. For example, I've always emphasized my target is the vast land in the north. Mm. I want to start pulling people out of poverty in the north. Mm. That's it, and I do so aggressively. I've always said it, we're going to make sure we recapitalize and deal with the bank of agriculture, which is based in Katuna. There's quite a number of things you start doing, and you see there's no other way to do it. Okay. And equity, justice, in all your daily. So the, the second part of that question was whether you would be willing we have to do... We maintain that we're going to form government of national unity. Okay. So if you don't win and somebody else wins and they invite you, would you join a government of national unity? No, no, it's not inviting me that is the problem. I've always said it. You work with all that work to show that you're working with everybody. For example, I've, somebody asked me that earlier today and I said, at my stage in life, there's a little or nothing I'm looking for in the sense of we're not looking for a job. But of course, why wouldn't I? It's my country. Even now that I'm not in office, I'm not in office, I still at all times defending various issues with regards to Nigeria. So we will if we win, our government will be government of national unity, but it must be focused on youth and women. Okay. Women and youth. And not we have specific questions about that. Which I'll come to in a minute, turned to us by women group, Thank you. Thank you. some of them. Um, but before I leave you and go back to Dr. Baba Ahmed, there is a sort of a slightly related question. Somebody in the audience talked about the attack on Governor Solido's home state and asked you your position 
around ESN. Well, you know, people. And I want to piggyback off that and ask you specifically what you make of the agitation in the East, specifically your position on IPOB and ESN. Everybody knows my position on agitation. Mm. I've said that dialogue and discourse with all agitation. Everybody, everywhere in the country is full of agitation. It is neither community effect of leadership failure over the years. There's nothing wrong in agitation. We dialogue and discuss with everybody. But what about the but attacks and the killings? That's what I'm saying. That when, what is said have no relation. And they say, Toledo has taken a position of Sudan and said, is my governor, is my senior brother. And we're very close. What is said is his opinion. You cannot attack people for expressing their opinion. Otherwise, We'll be talking to everybody on the road every day. You know how many people that tell me every day you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Please, yeah. I would have attacked you, sir. Yeah. You know I'm doing that. <laughs> everybody is telling me they don't have so, so, I have never known you, Peter. No, 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 no. They use a bad language. So, would you condemn anybody? ESN now for all the attacks we've no, seen? I cannot condemn them because I'm not sure who is yeah. doing what. You can't just come and be condemning people until somebody says, hey, wait a minute, how can I go? Every day, let me tell you, people try to do things. We can only condemn people when they, the process which have said, oh, this person has done this. So you don't believe Nigerian security services when INEC offices are attacked, when people have been killed, the late Dora Akunyeli lost her husband, and they say it is ESN. You don't Let me it, tell you, I personally, single-handedly, left Lagos without any single security, took first flight over it, drove to a the police station to retrieve the body of Tika Akinyele. Nobody did. I single-handedly, when I heard it, and what everybody knows, I was the last person to visit Dora Akinyele in hospital in India before she died. I'm very close to Vora and the family. Everybody knows. So I can tell you what happened to her, to Chika Akinyel. Nobody can say is this person or that person. Chika Akinyel was just trying to drive back to Elogu, ran into people who were robbing and doing lots of things. And other things which nobody can explain. Even where he was trying to say, no, stop this, no, stop that, of course he was sure. Mm -hmm. But you see, whenever things like that happen, people speculate all sorts of things and everything. Career engineers, where people just take off the way. Because there is a research that has shown a direct correlation between the announcement of the formation. There's no research. Let me, let me, let me, uh, there is research. There is no research. Me, there is research okay. that has shown a correlation between the announcement of the formation of ESN, the, some of the utterances of Namdi Kalu about take their guns, shoot their guns, and the spike in violence. People are saying if a witch is crying at night and you wake up in the morning, a baby has died. Uh, uh -huh. There is no. Okay. So I, you have, have, I, have, I have about 10 messages here. Yes. Saying I should not come to your program. I know. That you're totally against me. I know. And I'm here. I told them, I said, I want to think people who are against me. I know. I know. What they do? What they do? Because if I take, if I take all those witches, no, 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 I'm sorry. I want to see the witch before I call it to you. No, what, what, what it is is that if people tell you not to come and answer questions that have been asked freely, then they are not ready for you to become. That's what I tell them. Everybody yeah, 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 like you. Because, because you see, it's not just Kadri are saying these things. Every candidate who comes here, I put to them the things that are being discussed on social media and on, in the public space. And it is in their interest to answer Nigeria. So that's why you said yes. You know what I tell and you? And I'm happy you said I yes. I tell my sister, go there. Thank you. you know, and I believe I'm you. grateful. Sister. Let me move to the questions for Dr. Baba Ahmed. You were asked about your position on education, given the fact that you own a private university, and whether, as vice president, um, your government will have some sort of clash when it comes to dealing with ASU, 
who represent teachers in public universities that are government-owned versus sort of you who sort of make money from educating people? I don't make money from educating people. I make a career out of educating people. Right. Please explain. Your school is not free, is it? When existing data, which is verifiable, my friend is welcome to see. There is no correlation with the uh, length of time and the number of students in federal universities and state universities out of the classroom and our enrollment. We happen to be completely in different market segments. So there is absolutely no clash of interest between my humble self acting in the capacity of a vice president and how private and public universities are run. How would you bring in your fact, knowledge of where education? Where contradiction uh, will be yeah. is while somebody like me will be vice president and ASU would ever go on strike. Okay, so, 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 so here is the question. Bob. I would like to do yes. with the kind permission of Mr. President is the way he says he wants to sit down and dialogue with agitation groups. While he's doing that, I would like another group to quickly sit with ASU and extract a commitment that in that four-year period, they will not go on strike. Okay. So, so please, there is actually no link between the interest of well-run private university and how ASU goes on strike. In fact, I was most pained Mm -hmm. all the time for those eight months. I, I just cannot believe let, that the trillions of Naira in the Nigerian university system were allowed to waste. Okay, let's dig deeper a little bit into something you inferred in answering that question, which is that your knowledge of the way education work will, will come to bear in the way you solve the issues of tertiary education. Talk to us a little bit more about what your plan would be for higher education in Nigeria, and then if we have time, you go into foundational education as well. How are you going to improve education, given where it is at the moment? There is something generic. Permit me to use this analogy of the DNA that composes the cell, that composes the organ, that composes the system of an organism. You see, in the DNA of governance is that function of procurement. Mm. You procure security, you procure works, you procure education, you procure health care, and where you're not efficient in doing that, all hell will let loose. Um, so there is a generic answer to the specific question you are giving me, and which is bringing us to the systems level I always speak about. If I speak about procurement, it touches education, it touches security, and everything else. So every Naira spent in the education sector, and for that matter, any other government function, we are trying to run a government that will attract the fullest value for all amounts spent. That is what we are about. This is the first way... Yeah to deliver good governance. We will not spend money carelessly in such a way that 90% goes to personal, political, and group interest. No. What I'm interested in trying to find out from you and uh, Dr. Well, from Dr. Baba. Allow me to finish answering your, okay. your question. Okay, but there are people the waiting. money spent on education goes 100% in providing the infrastructure uh, the equipment, the welfare of personnel and the students, you are retaining 100% of your resources. <laughs> this is what we stand for. Over and above that, you come to systems, procedures, and practices. And these are places where you have a little thing to do. The curricula. We will go into international best practices, like the best courses that will bring us out of
consumption to production. Right. Recently, I was pained to hear that a very noble profession was being rubbish by someone who is aspiring to high office. You see, the production of water, water is life. Water saves life. Mm. And, and maybe we can relate that yes. to the question on climate now, change. Let, let me finish. And uh, you see, we are looking at areas where you would introduce new forces, uh, clean energy, waste management. And I really want to dive into them, right? But look at our time. It well, doesn't seem like this. When you are asking big questions, you are asking important <laughs> questions. I know. And you are asking questions that mean a lot to us. Yes, I understand. So I can take the whole of my energy, the whole of tonight, speaking to you about we education. We don't have tonight. <laughs> Sadly, <Yeah. laughs> we have only... <laughs> yeah. You know that song, Give Me Tonight. We don't have tonight. <laughs> We only have a few minutes. I, 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 the reason I want is that there's another question somebody asked on climate change. Yeah. And since you're talking about water and water being life, I thought Mr. Obi could use that as his launching pad to talk about your position on climate change, on the environment, the on what we're water. seeing happening. And then we will go to our remote locations and come back and talk about energy and energy transition. How about that? Okay. Okay, Ms. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, for climate change, first of all, we will do everything possible to follow the protocol. Right. Because there's already an agreement which Nigeria is signature. So what it is to within that agreement you have accepted, you do everything possible to follow the protocol. Where it is impossible? We will be able to navigate and communicate effectively. But if you look at some of this, let me just use the issue of like this flooding issue, the one we're facing today. Yes. It's over the years, it's something that needs to work. Over the years, the contract and everything that we awarded to dredge and the seal the nature and river bay. If you have been doing that, one, you have a means of water transportation which is greatly missing today. A lot of your cargo and allowing crops on your road and damaging your roads and all that. If you've been doing that, you have a lot to take in the flooding that we've been, or even channeling the water, building dams. When we talk about agriculture and transportation that is happening in the north, you have more than to turn out there. And dredging that should not be difficult. So, today, everybody knows that in Egypt they say, no Nile, no Egypt. Egypt has maintained the, the Nile in terms of edging, tilting, making it become a huge means of transportation and everything. And if Egypt can do it, then I can do it. In now, the everybody knows is over a thousand longer, a thousand kilometers longer than the Vanija and River Bene put together. Mm. Nine is six thousand, each one has fifty kilometers long. When Niger is four thousand, one hundred eighty four. So all those things put together. Mm. This, if they can do it, we can do it. Okay. Are you managing to dredge in the Benway and the Niger if you become president? Of course, the purpose has not only been going, it's just that people have been collecting the money and going away. Right. Nobody will collect contract and go away under our government. Okay. Let's, let's see if we can we have a young we have young audiences across six Nigerian universities, six locations, and I want to see if they are ready with their questions, starting with Bayero University, Kano. Hello, Bayero. Can you hear us? Hello, Bayero. I'm welcome to the NCC and Bayero University, Kano. I'm so glad to bring your attention. 
in which we have so many questions, but we have only two people who can ask the question. We have Esther Michael and let's start with Esther Michael. Hello, good evening. My name is Esther Michael Elevu. Good evening. My name is Esther Michael Elevu, 300 student of mass communication by University Kano. Well, my question goes first. The, the Nigerian power sector has been privatized, and yet uh, the Nigerian government keeps spending billions of naira to private enterprise in form of support. Now, it is apparent that the power sector is not working as we keep having system collapse every now and then. Now, I would like you to tell us what would you do differently to make the Nigerian power sector work again? Thank you very much. Yes, and we have Rahman Adeza who has a question to ask Mr. Obi. Good evening, Mr. Obi. I am Rahman mm -hmm. Adeza from Mass Communication Level 4 student. Sir, do you believe in the Afghan self-determination agitation? In a simple answer, yes or no. Also, what is your idea of federalism and restructuring? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much and have a lovely evening. Thank you very much. Um, Kano, do we have another university ready or do we deal with these questions first? Okay. We'll go with the questions first. Starting first with power sector, privatization, etc. Uh, I don't want to go into whether the privatization was dodgy. Done well with an issue with it. <laughs> I don't have an eye on the past, and I've maintained that we're going to look forward. I'm not going to waste everybody's time going to yesterday. Yesterday is done. I'm going to go tomorrow. But that we can do with the power issue as extensively as possible. One, today we have installed capacity of our 12 and a half pounds. Mm. But the cost of not having the transmission infrastructure to deliver that. And we have a distribution infrastructure to distribute that. First is to ensure as quickly as possible that you have the transmission infrastructure and the civil infrastructure to be able to transmit and distribute a stored capacity of about 12 and a half thousand and then centralized transmission still like we have you know, now we centralize it we decentralize right we centralize it. Okay. that's why i said have no infrastructure to deal with that as quickly as possible okay in doing have that, done the numbers numbers of the cost you've forgotten that mm -hmm. all over the place having two chips and everyone because on average a tra one kilometer of a transmission line costs about 1 million USD. Let me tell you, the amount of money we are wasting can deliver all those things. I've gone all the numbers. You know, we, 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 we. Can you know, this country has borrowed in the past eight years, we borrowed nearly a hundred billion dollars. Ten percent of that would have put us out of delivered power. So, I've done the numbers very well. The only thing I can do is numbers. <laughs> so, I've done it very well. The rest are short. What I'm saying is that you deal with that, as you're dealing with that, mm -hmm. as supporting the, the, those who are in generation today, providing an aggressive environment that will support their business, giving them access to finance, to support their business because okay. their business is troubled. Mm -hmm. We know they've had access to finance before in form of loans, in form of grants from CBN. Let me tell you. I said, give them access to finance. Believe me, we didn't get all these things that. Um, but they, they, one of the things they say they want is increase in tariff. Will you know, allow it? Of course, there's increase in tariff everywhere you go in the world. There's different tariffs for different areas. You can't charge people in Nikoi, you said that people in Ajegunle. <laughs> I will charge those who have to pay it, who have the resources to pay it. They'll pay it. I am 
And I will reduce the price for those who don't have. So those who have low income, you can subsidize. Those who have high income, they will pay the appropriate thing. And they are the one consuming more. If you go to the average house in Ikoi, they have all sorts of things. Different fridge in their bedroom and different In Ajegu, they have only one fridge in one. So I subsidize their own. Tell the people in Ikoi, appropriate. It's simple. Because they can afford to pay. Is that what we are talking about? Free subsidy. Everybody is paying subsidy. When there's people who have 12 cars here, yeah, and the people in my village who don't have any car, they're paying for subsidy. So we want to charge people appropriately based on their where we can make money from it. But then the living power will deal the stars every with it. South Africa declared emergency power when they are generating 50,000. And we are generating 5,000. We declare war. We declare war on power. War on power. What does, now, what, what does war look like on power in practical terms? Is that and more money? We are okay. We're going to allow people, we're going to stay, stay, anybody can generate up to 100 megawatts without license. Anybody who can generate power, if you can do one megawatt in your charity, anything you can do to have power will support you. We will give you all the support you need. No caveat, or there will be caveats and regulation and... Oh, there will be regulation, but the regulation will not be where it's impeded by all the restrictions, tax, there will be proper supervision, there will be proper details, but we're not going to waste your time by various taxes, mortgages, and everything. If we, if we want to start today, we'll make sure that by tomorrow, you're on and going, and we'll support you. You For example, I give you uh, if you go to Aba, yeah. we have a facility that has been running there for almost 15 years and put everything possible, including ensuring that all taxes, levies, everything is removed immediately. I want to see power. Okay. Let me turn to you. Thank you. And then, okay. Yes, on the, on, on, there's a second question that was asked, and I actually think maybe you are the one that should try and answer it. Um, what is your position regarding um, the agitation for the state of Biaf and people's right to self-determination? Uh, can you allow Mr. President to answer? <laughs> it's really it is. It is. It's no, I will tell you. His okay. answering will make more sense. Than okay. I've said it. He said it. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, my young, uh, because at this stage, I won't have two graduates. I'll call the person who asked the question, a son. Yes. yes. But I have two graduates at home. Let me tell you, when it comes to the issue of agitation, it's not yes or no. People are just everywhere, even in my house. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So when the sad thing you do with the agitator is to sit down and listen to the person who is agitating. Unless you sit down, you cannot say yes or no. I'm a Nigerian. I'm contesting the election as a Nigerian. I'm not contesting as any from any other place. I'm a Nigerian. I believe in Nigeria. I believe in the issue of Nigeria. And I believe that I'm going to bring all like the dogs back to Nigeria and make it work for them. Because the reason why they are detecting is injustice. When you provide justice, equity, and create a living place, you have to provide whatever. There will be education. So there was education. There was education. There was education. For, don't forget. There was education yesterday in America. Yes. Before. Don't think America is like this. Mm. There was agitation before. There was agitation before in Brazil. A, I can show you countries where there's so much agitation. But that when level playing field were created, where people had work, talent, much of the opportunity, all these things will go. Okay. So Just wait. He, he wants to ask I, I allowed my principal to answer this question because we have nothing to hide. Mm. When I joined this, he stated, and just before I joined it, I faced a great deal of resistance and afterwards a great deal of difficulty, all centered around this. 
he is the best, best person to answer, and he has told you clearly, I allowed him because there is absolutely nothing to hide about uh, that, that, agitation or yeah. about his candidacy, about where he comes let, from. Let's go a little bit into devolution, restructuring, yes. which is another debate and things that are sort of in the public domain. We have conversations. So, um, do you believe in restructuring? And if you do, what does it mean to you? Because it means different things to different people. When you talk about restructuring, you talk about the issue of constitutionality. Dealing with the constitution, the structure the country is a constitutional matter which has to be dealt with every day. Our government will be by consent. People need to sit down and decide this is the way we should go. It is not so a national go. conference again. Or? No, not a there's a lot of documents already that there's a lot of conversation already that we can bring up and look at and say all the do you know what people are talking about? So the consensus through National Assembly? I'm trying to understand the of mechanism. Of course, for you to restructure Nigeria today, it was just so to National Assembly. Right. And in doing that, you need to come out with a convinced Nigerian, which I can tell you about. Let me take issue of security. There's no reason why we should not have local government, state, state police, and national police. Okay. It is a part of restructuring. Well, like, you know at times why people are, are talking about issue of restructuring and it looks as if it's something difficult is because we are, we are a consuming state which exists in this sharing formula which we already say we remove and put production formula. Production formula. We'll talk about production formula after we've spoken to the University of Ibad. Thank you. Niron, I hear you on standby. I guess we are standby here at the University of Ibadan on your own state. My name is Nero at this one. We have two of the students here ready to ask questions. First up, we we'll start with uh, Samuel. Samuel, let's have your question. Good evening, Mr. Obi. I am Samuel Adibola by name, a financial student of the Department of Geography from the University of Ibadan. So my question goes first. Nigeria is still over dependent on oil, yet we have enormous deposit of other natural resources that can pump money into our economy. So in diversifying the economy of Nigeria, do you have any plans on reviving the Ajao Kota steel company? If yes, how? This is because the steel industry is the bedrock of any industrialized nation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, that's uh, coming from somewhere. We have a lot of questions coming from uh, who is also right here as well. Good evening, Mr. Peter and Dr. Gatsi. My name is Timothy Peshola, a standard a startup founder, also from the University of Ibadan. Having promised to make Nigeria a producing country, what roles would startup and SMEs play in growing the economy under your administration? And clearly state what your plans are for building entrepreneurs in the country. Thank you very much. Okay, those are the two questions from the University of Ibadan this evening. I want to say thank you very much for giving us the opportunity as well. Thank you very much. I'm um, over to you. Well, um, the first question is about the dependent on oil and the first fine the economy. Nigeria and yeah, the steel. Yes, and the yeah. yeah. steel. Let me all, all correct one thing people make a mistake about. Yeah. Nigerian economy is well diversified. Except that it's not productive. This because the oil you people are talking about, today, go and check our GDP. Oil contributes less than 10% of our GDP. However, oil is... 50% of government... No, 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 50% of government revenue and about 80% of our foreign revenue because we have not made the other area productive. For example, oil agriculture contributes about 21 percent of the GDP, when I do less than 10 percent, but we allow that oil because we are not a productive economy. In doing that, it, it, and it talks about other natural resources, that is also going back, yes, we have natural resources, but it's then going back to the same, you know, going back to the same extractive industry, which to me is a diminishing asset. Mm -hmm. We want to go to intellectual 
Donc, il y a une tense. Il y a une forte révolution de la révolution, qui est maintenant une brain. C'est ce que nous devons faire. Et nous devons maintenant, quand nous avons dit sur le Vietnam Expo, nous devons faire plus de 1% de la ressource de la ressource électronique. C'est 60%. They are doing 60 billion. Mm. If they do clothing, 32 billion. Footwear. They are doing more in footwear almost than we're doing in law, but we will be in law. Mm. So, agriculture. So, let me give you an example of what I use every day. Mm. Netherlands. Our total export is under 30 billion. Mm. Netherlands is 33,000 square kilometers. The agricultural export last year is 103 billion euros, 120 billion dollars. When I that state, where we have seven local governments occupied by bandits, is 76.3 thousand people, two and a half times the land. We remove this country from consumption so, I, I think, to production yeah. by investing first in agriculture so we can feed ourselves and export. Okay, so... This sounds all really you know, amazing and fantastic, but I have a question about the immediacy and the urgency of some of the issues that are facing us. I can see how over a year or two years you can begin to do some of these things. If I think in terms of um, setting up, you know, um, agricultural places, getting people educated to produce shoes, all of that, these things take time. In the sense of the immediate issues facing us, as we speak today, people are getting kidnapped. As we speak today, farmers are paying ransom in order to go and farm, and some are not even farming. I told you that. I told you that our priority is to secure the country. Okay, so let's Can we talk a little bit about that and the how? Mm. No, we're not. Gonna, I'm not going to tell you how. Ah, I'm why? Tell you how I'm going to how, I'm going to catch them. How can I tell you how? Now, for this stage, <laughs> if I tell you, they won't be there, and they'll find another route. So I'm not, all I said is that we are going to be told me Kalea I and Dati Obamed will be in charge. Okay. I'm going to be commander in chief. I'm going to be in charge. I will make security a priority and the security we are going to put in place will be responsive and responsible. Okay. So if you are not delivering, you are not in charge. Two things no. that come up when you say that. As far as I know, and I can't say I know everything, it's possible I'm wrong, right? As far as I know, none of you has any experience of dealing with the sort of insecurity that Nigeria is facing now. Absolutely okay. untrue. Okay. No, no, absolutely. I said maybe I'm wrong. He's a military man. No, 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 I said maybe I'm wrong. So, so as far as I know, so if I'm wrong, <laughs> if I'm wrong, you tell can me I, I'm wrong. Can I just say something? Yes. The yes. moment you have the people in power not stealing your money, you're already getting richer. The moment they announce a government who are not complicit in bringing insecurity to your country, okay. you are already defeating insurgency and banditry. Okay. The moment we announce a group of people I, who mean business I, and who know business, can you pause a little? Your, please, your, please. your economy is already fixing itself. Uh, Dr. Bahamed, just pause for me a little. All right. You made a statement yeah. that is very heavy, yeah. and very serious, because we're having a national conversation watched by millions. You talked about a government that is complicit yes. in bringing insecurity. Yes. Implying that you believe yes. that there are people in government or that this particular government... Kadia, you can never tie me down. You can never put I me in front of me. I'm asking you to clarify what you said. Yes. I you repeat. said it. I, I didn't say it. And let me repeat. Um, the moment you have a government in place that is not complicit in bringing insecurity to your country, you are already defeating banditry. And you want to expand on that? Why should, the moment we say it, the goalposts change. Mm. Okay. 
Because if I talk about it, I will say it's because I'm anti. Meanwhile, I am a people, so I have to ask the question. That's my question. Okay. Right? Okay. A lot has happened. Yes. In Nigeria. Nigeria is a very, very peaceful country. Used to be. No, it still is a very peaceful country because if despite all the evils that have happened to Nigeria, mm. we're still managing to keep the, the numbers so low. I think Nigeria, Nigerians by nature are peaceful. Okay. So you will tell us how you will solve insecurity because you believe you'll be giving away Nigerian let, me, let, me, let me give you one of the examples. Okay. Kadria. You really like my name, If you start pulling people, <laughs> if you start pulling people out of poverty, you start reducing criminality. It is the, it is the number one thing for Brazil, Mexico, I can call countries, I call countries, mm. where I, and that is the I have used to it's a group. Right. So, I mean, the reason why I'm kind of looking at my phone is I'm looking at the number. There were yeah. two questions, but I haven't seen the question. The, the, the second question, question was, um, I, I, so, I didn't even really get to the issue of, <laughs> they were talking about the issue of Jupiter Steel and everything. Yes. All those projects will be looked into to their viability. What are you doing differently from this government? Because this government does have a steel program. Yeah. And Ajakuta is being discussed while another steel plant has, you know, no, in the no. process of being built. Let me, let what me. are you going to do differently? I don't want to say anything we're going to do differently, but we're different people. Okay. That's what we're different. Do you believe that two of fours can wear crater? We're not wear share. We didn't benefit from what is being shared. We created well. I created well. I built people. As both in private and as a public person, the non corporations that are successful, they are my... As governor of Anambra State, yes. when you left off, yes. your IGR was 500 million a month. Nili Obianu came, and within months, that IGR had become 1.2, 1.3 million. Seemingly able to outperform you. So sometimes when people hear you say... Can, you I, can, I, can I tell you one? Can I tell you one? You see, you see, people don't look at the foundation. I built the process that made it possible. You couldn't have a long one. Let me tell you. Go and check. Go and check. No, go and check. I built the, I built the IGR building. Mm -hmm. Computerized it. Right. Did everything. So when people say somebody came yesterday and it's very working... Look at the foundation. Okay. It was you made the foundation. You know, I made it to work. Okay. You didn't put it to money. Let me not tell what happened thereafter. <laughs> so I did that foundation. We're going to have to take a quick break. And when we come back, we go to our other remote. Uh, no, 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 Daya Media, in association with Kabbalah Entertainment, presents The Candidate, a presidential town hall media series where the presidential candidates of the six leading political parties tell us about their plans for the country. Join Kadaria Ande as we meet us into the world of these candidates from the 17th to the 23rd of November 2022. This very important program will be streamed on FRCN, Radio Now, DSTV, NTA, Facebook, YouTube, and more. This is a town hall meeting you shouldn't miss. Tune in. Welcome back. You are watching The Candidate, a Daria Media Town Hall series brought to you with the support of the MacArthur Foundation and in partnership with Nigerian Television Authority, Kabal Entertainment, Network Service of Radio Nigeria, Emmanuel Tapo, Citizen Zikoku, Silverbird Television, Plus TV, News Central, and in JJ Television. Now let's go to um, the audience and get a few questions from them. And before we do, um, 
I kind of like that you're all here and you're engaged, you're exciting. But if we could keep the noise a little bit down because it is interrupting a very important conversation. I'm sure you all want people at home to hear him clearly and for me to be able to allow him to finish answering his question. I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. There's a lady in blue in front and the lady next to her. And then we can go to the back after that. Let's have a few ladies, please. We've not had women speak. We're supposed to have two microphones. So where are they? Can you guys move and hand them? She's in front. Please. We will make our way to the back. Let's start with the ladies because we've not had a woman talk. Thank you, ma'am. Do I have to stand up? You can sit. You Thank can you. Sit. Good evening, gentlemen. So I have three questions. They better be fast. <laughs> yes, my name is Ereti Bakari. Um, my first question is to do with SME. I'd like to know, most SMEs complain about stealth taxation. Do you intend to eradicate that? If so, would you be able to afford to? Stealth. So there's taxes that are hidden. Stealth. Hidden. So triple taxing. That's number one. Number two, if you were, and this is hypothetical, but if you were president today, would you sack the CBN government? Yeah. Number three, <laughs> once you become president, are you willing, bold, and brave enough to imprison those found guilty of corruption, including the current president, if he's found guilty? Thank you. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Priscilla Madi. I'm still going to add something about SMEs because I'm particularly happy about the fact that the president is very interested in moving the country from consumption to production. Um, according to the Nigerian um, Bureau of Statistics, SMEs in Nigeria have contributed about 48% of the national GDP in the last five years with a total number of about 17.4 million, they account for about 50% of industrial jobs and nearly 90% of the manufacturing sector. Now, Mr. Peter, how would you be able to further empower this sector? Because even though they contribute, a well, they contribute well to the economy, they still face massive challenges, especially in various sectors, including it's really, really lack important of that people power. keep their questions short. There's yes, a lot I of will. people who want to answer, ask, and we still have people in Nigeria <laughs> universities. And if people have asked the same question, please don't repeat it. It isn't the same. I was coming to the part of empowering the SMEs because they are really facing a lot of challenges. Okay. Mr. Peter, what would you do differently, sir? Thank you. Please give um, the three, four people at the back so many questions. Quick, and we need to be fast. Good evening, everyone. My name is Santos. I'm from Human Capital Africa, and I'm going to education. Um, you've spoken a lot about education, Mr. Peter. Um, and we're in a region where nine out of ten children at the age of ten can't read with meaning, and foundational learning um, is it, almost zero. Um, we also are in a region where the Dakar Pact has said that you spend 15 to 20 percent of your national budget on education. Nigeria spends around five. To six percent. If you are elected president, how would you address this foundational literacy and numeracy? Thank, and thank, how thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It's important to say that if you insist on prefacing your questions, we can't get everybody in. Your presidential candidate has all the context; he understands the play. So please, no more questions. We're going to the remote sides. Medigui is on standby. We've got very limited time. We have to be disciplined. Yeah. Okay, no, may, let's take a few more from the University of Meduguri, then we'll lump them all together. Yes, Meduguri, we can hear you. Good evening, Nigeria. Uh, welcome to the University of Meduguri. Uh, we have two questions from the students here for the presidential candidates, starting with Abdul Salam. Abdul Salam. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Abdul Salam Ilyasu, and my question is, uh, Mr. Opi, what can you do to convince a rural man who has been influenced by the uh, existence of P 
PDP and APC to vote for the Bo Party. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Sadu Ella. Good evening. My name is Political Ali. Yes, please carry on. Good evening. My name is Sadu Okanya from the University of Medjugorje. Nigeria has been designated as one of the poverty capitals of the world. I want to know what the presidential candidate and his deputy plan, what's their plan to reduce the rate of poverty in the country, and also what strategies will they employ to bridge the gap between lower income earners and the middle class? Thank you. Okay, so I'm um, just to also say... Thank you very much, Medjugorje. Can people please try not to repeat questions? We've got very limited time, and it's important that we give them an opportunity to talk about as many things as possible. So if someone has already asked a question, please don't repeat it. Okay, Sans. Let's come back to you. Well, let me start from the uh, issue of Medjugorje, because I'm sure there's a long way to ask this. He says, what are you going to do, if I understand the first question, to make people to move away from PDP and APC to Labour Party? I think it's very simple. They drove us by this junction. If you have a driver that has driven a vehicle where you've come to a point where the vehicle has an engine problem, the vehicle can no longer move, they're not going to allow the same driver to continue. But, Mr. Did you want to fix this vehicle? But you wear that vehicle. No. Just as, late, as early no. as 2019, no. you were in PDP. You were in PDP. No, no, no. One minute, one minute. I never see. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. ANPP. Let me tell you. Moses lived in Egypt. <laughs> okay. So was Joseph. Mm. The one part of it, God comes and chooses from within, you're not going to create new people. From within, you are there already. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So it, is, it didn't create new people, it didn't create new creatures. It is from the same people that I said, so I'm this, picking this one. This is not the old wine, just packing the new no, bottles. No, no, this is new wine. But we have been existing with the old wine because they are not very good. But they found out that this is, we cannot continue Living with this, but living, living in an environment where you find out that this environment you are not part of it. Mm. All the first class leaders that we have all over the world, we are part of the same society. But they decided we can no longer live this way. Even discoveries with the, all the people who have done it everywhere, it is people challenging the status quo. Mm. That's what we're doing today. Okay. That's what yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's let's move on. Yeah. So, people will say you are status quo. Let's move on. Yes. Because of what's wrong. And will you sack CBN governor? They feel no, no, I'm going to come to that. Okay. You know, pulling people out of the public sector. Okay. 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 It doesn't it be, it's, 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 when you want to change the society, mm. the court majority of the people, including yourself, live of the old order, mm. they don't see the future. Mm. That's, what, that's why they say, that's why they say, leader, must be a good brother. When I we want to understand, when I went to Anambra, say, let me give you an example. Yes. When I went to Anambra and said to people, our education cannot continue to be at 26. We're going to change our education. We're going to change this. They say, no, you can't do this. Because we don't see it. You know when you were talking about me being impeached in production, you forgot that I challenge, when I challenge my election, people say it's impossible to come to the court. Mm. When I was impeached, people say it's impossible to come back. And later, when I challenge interpretation of the law of government, they say it's impossible. So people are not seeing that. We are creators. We see the future. Let me just clarify. We are let not me, saying you don't have a vision. Let me tell you what we how, want to I see want to is understanding the world map to that how. vision. I want to tell you the how. People are here about MSMEs. 
micro small businesses is the foundation of every economy even in the south in the west in the west globally the two and but i let me use what we can call a developing and those who are starting to give you an example mm -hmm. i'm going to use big countries like china indonesia and vietnam history to give you an example in china msme composed 60 percent of the production 60 percent of the export and about 60 percent of the employment and they contribute 50 percent of the revenue so how is that going to happen here thank you first is that you must articulate a proper agenda like china in china today if you look at the overall banking lending in china about 20 percent to 25 percent of the lending is degraded to msme in Indonesia, mm. there's a ministry for MSMEs because they control 90% of the employment. So is we in Vietnam. In Nigeria, about, I think we have over 30 trillion land today and everything. MSMEs control less than 5%. So how are you going to encourage banks, which are private enterprises, to give loans to SMEs? Because I'm, this is the answer we're looking, we're looking for. Listen, I'm coming from that side. Okay. Don't forget. I know. That's I'm what I'm my life is about finance. That's what I've done all my life. It's a combination of two main things. You have to have a physical and monetary policy. Channel and the government grants. Anchor Farmer Borrowed Programs? No, not, yes, but done differently. Not announced in Abuja. Mm. But dealing with the bank of industry and going to deal with the people, the farmers. Because what you have now is that good programs announced on TV, but poorly implemented. The people don't do what is expected here. They do what is expected. I will be there with the farmers. I will be there with the people. I've supplied directly, and I'll get it done. Uh, Adria, yes. Can I just come in? Yes, please. Mr. President, uh, uh, our candidates told us that corruption kills hard work, enterprise, and innovation. There is a certain disequilibrium in our system. Uh, you see, necessity is the mother of innovation. We need to innovate, force people to leave the present preoccupation, which is government contract, and go into SMEs. So we have to do it by force. Okay. That is what I need you to see. Now, let me, and let me when my Elsa has finished talking, on, let me just ask okay, you. Just finish this. Okay, yeah. go Yes. On. If anybody can get a government contract mm. and make uh, nine times profit, right. From that, simply because he's a relative, acquaintance, gatekeeper, or influencer in government. Such people will never go into enterprise. There is a government coming into place to say that there is no more easy money. That 90%, 9 times, 900% profit he used to make is no longer there. That money is, belongs to all Nigerians. That is what we are going to do that is different. When Nigerians realize that they can't go and rely on their uh, relatives in government to make easy money, they have to go into industry. Okay. And, and, and I will ask you again when, 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 when we come back. When we come back, we'll go to the line. You are giving me one sentence of what he's okay. saying. All right. But you have already discussed everywhere. Mm. We must stop people wealth without enterprise. Thank you. All that must come with enterprise. Okay. And again, I will come back to the how after we have spoken to Bielsa. Hello, Bielsa. Good evening, Kadaria. Welcome to Bielsa State. My name is Victor Pinawari, and we have two people that will be asking questions from this station. I would like to move to Emmanuel quickly. Emmanuel, please step forward and ask your question. Mm -hmm. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We, we, okay, well, we can't hear you. We seem to have audio problems. So I think maybe if we um, go back to the questions around CBN political, yes, yeah, CBN governor and political allegiance. Let me tell you. Uh, and, okay. Ah, are you back, Bayelsa? Okay. 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 Doctors are leaving the country to Europe and other parts of the world. Doctors are leaving and our best friends are leaving. If you become the president of Nigeria, how will you reverse this trend of mass exodus of our people? How will you make Nigeria acceptable and livable for its people? Also, if you become the president of this country, by which constitution will you operate in this country? If you are to operate with the illegitimate 1999 constitution, why will you do that? Thank you. Okay, okay quickly, we'll move to Honorable Elliot for his question. Now, good evening, the Peter of the and his wife. I am Augustus Elliot Osomo, yes. a former legislator from Bielsa State. Should you become the president of this country, how would you solve the problem of environmental pollution in the Niger Delta region, where the wealth of this nation comes from? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you, by Elsa. And because we're running out of time, I'm going quickly to Enugu before we come back to Mr. Obi and Dr. Baba Ahmed. Enugu, can you hear us? Okay, well, Enugu doesn't seem to be ready, so we'll go back to the to answers to this question. Well, uh, in the issue of stacking of CBN government. Yes. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, we can hear you. I am Enugu. I am Informa Ajimobi. Got two questions. Blessing and Valentine have some questions, and they would address it to the candidate. Valentine, please, let's hear you. My name is Anantanu Belango, um, I'm greeting from Enugu. This is my first question is, you have spoken a lot about improving the agricultural production in the north. But please, how would you achieve this, given that there is a very high amount of bandage in the recent years? And my second question is that, <coughs> my second question is that, if you're elected, how would you cope or put reforms to stop other criminal activities in the country, such as the unknown government in the east and the kidnappings around the entire nation. Thank you. We have Blessing on standby as well for our question. Blessing. Good evening from Enugu. My name is Blessing Chimeze. Sir, if elected the president of Nigeria, you said you will remove subsidy. So I want to know how do you intend to manage the effects of subsidy removal on the masses, particularly, because this will result to the increase of the cost of fuel and also to the increase of commodities in the market. Thank you. That's the much we have from Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, if you could treat it's almost like a rapid fire round. Okay, speaking of, time. speaking of CBN governor, it depends on the reason. He can't just get up and sack CBN governor. Are you happy with his performance now? Well, I, I, I'm not. I didn't appoint this one. But you are going but to be the first president. You will inherit him. No, 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 no. We don't worry. What the hell happened then? When I become, and I will deal with that matter. Then you will have only one year to go. You know. So don't worry. I'm not going to sack him. Okay. Well, I saw okay. you. It depends on what is happening then. Right. On issue of fighting corruption, and my position is no. I'm not going to fight corruption by being vindictive. We're going to study, make sure that the proper investigation and everything. We're going to criminalize the country the way it's being done now, where they are running after people up and down. If you don't like somebody's case, you just nickname them. No. We will operate by the rule of law. We will do that. We will do that. 
I will ask sure you this question. There's a proper investigation. There's a proper lead. Where will even negotiate that negotiate? That's why I'm asking because we don't need to be in Indonesia. We need the money mm -hmm. to come back. So we can use it to work. If you put people in jail and they take away the money, what are we going to do? Well, the other countries of the world who have done it better, and I learn from them. If it means we already have a law here, the whistleblower laws, the Let laws that, that I'm not going to go back. Okay, I'm going to put a new law from the day I start. Right. If we take money, this is what is going to. But nobody will take because I'm sure they will know that if I'm not taking, what the, you shouldn't take. But what the law going back. As president, I'm going to go back in an organized manner. I'm not going to go and be going around all over the place. Okay, but because you, you refer to, you will make laws, and laws are made by the no, National no, the, Assembly. No, no, I'm saying, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the National Assembly and say, this is the law for corruption. Hmm. And if that we intend to implement, and if they refuse to sign it, no, no, the thing we do, no, don't worry, I'll be, I don't want it now. <laughs> in another brother, go and see. No money was missing in Anambra State. Uh, if it was missing, Canada, it is not easy for somebody to give an office where nobody is asking you and you left one fifty million dollars. And according to the person who came after you, you left you left dead. That argument has been going back. He said you had contracts no, to pay and you let me let me very well. Up to today, mm. up to today, I'm quoting the some interview by Mr. Willie Obiano. Listen very careful, mm. listen to me. Up to today, I say this, and let me say it now in this time of meeting. The day I left office, I was not only one contractor who have complete, who have executed his job certificate issue. Let that one come. I'm not only one supplier who has delivered what we ordered and we're all in the past. I'm not only one civil servant, salary, pension, gratuity. If any of them come out today, I stop. Let me ask for clarity. Let me ask for clarity. If it's a measurement in the a contract for nine kilometer road, somebody build one kilometer and they're paying him. Yes, no. Because I was prepared for what I received. So the allegation he made was no. that just before you left this, you gave out a lot of contracts. No, we had to it, deal with paying for those contracts. This allegation. Okay, I'll give you an this issue that is real. <laughs> uh, let me tell you how government works. Mm. If, for example, let the government, as the government of Buhari, award out the road. When you come, you will pay. No, when I come, the one you do, you pay. Another person will come. Please don't pay. Okay. You can't. Nobody finishes everything. Even That's why I say that yeah. the one I've not done. Let other people complete. There was a question about the constitution you know, that was described as illegitimate no. and how, whether I you were working about it. Because there's a lot of uh, questions. There's a lot of questions which we need to quickly deal with. We still have to deal with somebody yeah. with issue. So issue of brain drain. Yeah. Let me tell you, everywhere in the world where there's been a brain drain, actually, if they do the right thing, you know what will happen? All those brain drain, I tell them, they'll be brain gain. They will come because they'll be the first investors to come back when I and Daddy start turning around here. Mm -hmm. They'll come back with their investment. The first foreign investor you attract in any country is people who have left from your system. You have made money abroad. When they now see opportunity here, they will come back. Like I always say, when people go at but that's not remittances, I said we double it. How are we going to double it? When we produce a conducive environment for them to bring more money, today they are remitting only 5% 5, 5 of their income. They will remit 10 to 20. When they start coming back to invest here, it is more conducive. They start coming back for holidays and everything. And we will do that. So brain drain will be brain gain in the future. Watch it happen. The issue of the constitution is neither here nor there. What am I saying? Any constitution, don't forget that a country like Britain doesn't have a written constitution. Any constitution is put into amendment. That's what we're talking about in country. We will sit down and come out, don't call it a foreign constitution. We haven't even implemented that the foreign to our mm -hmm. So, Let's start with it, and then we will amend it 
in order or structured as we agreed yeah. in the government of consensus. We're not going to govern by military men. It is we have to sit down with everybody agreed to what we're going yeah. to do and everything. Yes. SMS by stealth. The stealth taxes of the SMSs. I've said that the engine of growth is MSME. That was that's very well important. I've told you SME, MSMEs is the engine in which we are going to develop the place by putting money, supporting our youth, the greatest assets of this country today. Physical human asset is our youth. Mm. With energy and talent. What they need is for us to put money into them. If we put money into them today, you could, when we talk about the energy, whether it's agriculture or this, like, at the state, they need corruption. What is the money? Corruption is entrepreneurship. You get these young ones to be able to be supported, basically, in everything. Let me give you just a closing, because I'm sure you've said. Well, we still have a few okay, well, so, yeah. so many, many that for every young person they gave five thousand dollars every year they found that a year or so after the person is employing twenty percent. Okay. This point I borrowed in the past eight years about hundred billion dollars. If we have decided to use ten billion to tear it among okay. Can you do the number? I am trying this to this is phenomenal. I, yeah, but the thing is we shall be part of the times like when we sort of talk to you, why I sometimes get a little bit is that we hear about what's happening in other places. I give you an example. One minute, I'll give you an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another brother, no. okay. Let me give you an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. Go and ask Evelyn Oputu. Still alive. I was the first governor in Nigeria mm. to go to Bank of Endos. If I was talking to him, it happened on a Sunday. Mm. I said, MD, can I come and see you? He said, when I said, can I come tomorrow? I was calling him on Saturday. He said, tomorrow but I have to go to church. I said, well, I'm coming to see you. It's about church. Mm -hmm. Church is about serving. We all go there to pray for God to solve our problem. Mm -hmm. Part of it is, we will pray and God will solve the problem I'm coming to. I went to our office on Sunday. I said, an Ambrose State wants to partner with Bank of Endos. We are willing to 50% of what we're going to bring, you bring 50% and you lend money to MSMEs in Anambra State. Well, I, is that and what's, that the, one? what's the result of that intervention? Well, the result is for you to go and look. Mm, you know, people to, have said, they are not going to Anambra. You have to tell them. In 2014, when I left office, mm. go and check. In terms of poverty, mm. Most place we have poverty. Anambra is number three with eleven point two percent. People uh, I've had people even say that they don't know. Eleven point two mm. after Lagos. It's not that the it's an Ambra. Thank you very much. We need to go to Abuja quickly. We're running out of time and I don't want people who've taken the trouble to sit down. Or oh, where are we going? Um the social media questions are not ready. Is, that, is Abuja ready? Okay. All right. So we'll carry on talking. Let me... Okay. Yes, Can I just you want to say something? Regarding the Nigerian news flowing out of Nigeria, yeah. I said that it is better to have brain drain than to have a brain in the drain. Um, it is necessary to protect the future of our youth by allowing them to go and get the careers they can get elsewhere and otherwise they could not have been able to get there. That is when His Excellency said that 
and that can be followed by brain gain. Then the other issue I want to add here is that why buy fuel cheap and buy security expensively? This has to do with the removal of subsidy. So we uh, are simply looking at the price of refined petroleum product. You buy it cheap and then you buy security more expensive. Does that make sense? And what we're yeah. saying is that there is a way to reform governance at the same time reshaping industries and businesses. So, so but what, if you hmm. remove what is in subsidy and solve the problem of security, hmm. security is cheaper, you cannot put a Naira figure to it. Okay. So, I mean, we keep talking about and this subsidy. Is by and, far, and this is by far uh, a better gain trade-off to make. There's a it's more possible. Mm. Uh, it touches the entire society. Uh, who has a car, who doesn't have a car, uh, consuming security. But, I, 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 uh, I hear uh, you, uh, but if I could ask, yes. you know, for a sort of a more broadened conversation around yes. energy yes. and energy security yes. and diversification yes. and the fact that um, increasingly, very soon, our oil is actually going to be worthless because, you know, the rest of the world is moving and looking at doing clean energy and all sorts of things. And, and I'm just sitting here and I'm wondering whether um, you've, you guys have put together a policy that is in tandem with the realities of today and tomorrow and what is being projected to happen. Because even the petrol, even if we now go back to, let's say, full production, within a very short period of time, our oil is no longer going to be valuable. Maybe to us, right? But not to the rest of the world. And so I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm thinking. Okay, where is the sort of the, the forward thinking, the ideas? I'm telling, you, telling you about production. You are talking in generalities. No, not specific. it's in generality. I told you that in a simple thing, we will invest in key development areas, which is if you talk about HDI. One. You talk about HDI. Mm -hmm. What is the HDI? Right. Health, mm -hmm. education, yes. and Display. per capita, okay. which is pulling people out of poverty. Yes. The question you ask is, how do you delivery health, for example? I don't know. What did I do to these three? Yeah, if I remember correctly, doctors were on strike during your time for about it's 11 months. Even it's teachers were on strike. <laughs> so not only doctors. I want them go to strike. But when I when you bring a change, all those who live up to all brother who go on strike. Okay. Now, I think I will go so, on strike. Yes, time. yes because, mm -hmm. because let me tell you when all these people who are living up to all brother are going to protest. Okay. You realize, so going to go out. you realize I keep trying to get us to go to the granular well, level. Let me, let me and we granular. keep talking about generality. Right. When I became so health, for example, let me ask specific questions. I, when I became At the governor, moment, you talk about governor. human capital. Me, okay. When I became governor, mm. we decided we were going to deal with health. Yes. We found out we didn't even have the human infrastructure needed for primary care. No single school of Nothing, midwifery, air technology, everything was accredited in the entire state. And I want to even say, so go and verify. I said, listen, we're going to deal with it. They came with all of plan. I said, no, we are going to partner with agencies that are dealing with it already. We have Church of Nigeria. They have School of Nursing, School of Midwifery. All this in the house of the EM. We have other facilities owned by these churches and government agencies. So where are you going to put money doing a new one? Because you're talking about strike. Because if I put money down today, go to Anambra State, we have over a dozen combined school of nursing, school of midwifery, school of health technology. All functional. I do the fastest teaching hospital ever built in Federal Republic of Nigeria. Or the most legitimate teaching hospital today. He has built the biggest 
private hospital, tissue hospital in Nigeria today. I do the first test as the governor. So I can go on and on and tell you what I did in health. Right. In education, I don't need to only just yesterday. When the bishop said, Peter, we should be able to replicate what he did in education nationally. <laughs> Where we move for number 26, number one. The size, the only measure of development between the year 2000 and year 2015 mm. is Millennium Development Goal. Yes. I started implementing it in year 2007. When it was concluded in year 2015, I was number one in this country. Mm. So, it is not a question of how. On top of all this that I said, I've said it where you say people are doubting. I've called the three banks where I left money. None of them have ever come and say, I didn't leave money. What you hear is that, not even the person I had it over say I didn't leave money. All you hear is that, uh, uh, this youth, this group, that group, I didn't hand over to a group, I handed over to somebody. Mm. And I want that person to come and say, I didn't see this money. Okay. Let me, let me quickly just ask you to give a little bit the issue of health. Only 3% of Nigerians at the moment have any sort of proper health coverage. Yes. And the reason why I've been asking you to sort of go into this with a bit more detail is because I've seen bits and pieces of you talking about a plan yeah, to deal with to the issue of insurance. You, it, it, insurance. I, I wanted to get a sense you of what that means. The issue of health insurance. Okay. That is what is done everywhere in the world. By, by getting everybody in that basket, you're going to get the big, the small, and everything. That is what you need to so private driven health care through insurance the government has to contribute so government majorly. will pay for some of it majorly because that's the only way those facilities can reach the poor the, the government, government doesn't pay the government at the moment is struggling and we're seeing that even our main resource oil is dwindling in value globally. Listen, government is struggling because you're not doing the right things. Mm. You're not investing. You're borrowing money and throwing it away. You're borrowing money and people are stealing it. If you do the right thing, you create wealth. No government is stationary. You know, if, God, if other governments can do it, we can do it here. Mm. We're going to do the right things. Government is too much waste. We're going to curtail all the waste. Okay, so there's a question here that I've been trying to get to because people have been sending things yeah. online. And I've, um, how much priority are you willing to give foundational learning, primary school education, compared with other stages of education? I think somebody else asked. Foundational learning is the key. Right. In the first is the critical thing. Remember what I told you. Three things is what you need to measure development. The more educated your people are, the more development they are. Right. Today, you cannot... Your human capital is about 168. Okay. Very low. I'm going to ask you to make your closing statement because unfortunately, despite our best efforts, we have not been able to even get through to Abuja. I'm sure they'll be disappointed. And we're about to wrap. So essentially, if you could tell me what your unique selling point is, tell Nigerians in a nutshell, again, remind them why when February they go to the polls, they should vote for the two of you. Okay. Two of us have appealed to Nigeria. Next year's election should not be based on tribe. No tribe buys bread cheaper. I have better rules and everything. It should not be based on religion. No religion buys bread cheaper or have been able to employ everything. It should not be based on my turn. It is turn of Nigeria to take back their country. Mm -hmm. We have promised we will secure a united this country. That's your promise. We have promised we will ensure that we move Nigeria from consumption to production, start pulling people out of poverty. We will ensure we will work the rule of law, deal with issues of corruption, where we will bring it to a minimum. We will govern from the front. We will charge. And we will make Nigeria 
what where today we don't have, we have a Nigeria, but we don't have Nigerians. We will create Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We will be proud of the country because we'll be in charge. The, 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 it will stop at our desk. We will work as a brother. And the, Today possible. We would also like to thank our other partners, Nigeria Television Authority, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Zikoko Citizen. Um, I'm struggling to remember the partners. Um, uh, Star Trust TV, Silverbird TV, Kaftan TV, Injenje TV. So, you know, when it comes to issues that has to do with security, Peter Obi has always said he's going to dialogue with all the people who are agitating. He has said it time and over. He was the first person that said this before other aspirants start talking about negotiation, you know? So, guys, when it comes to security in the Southeast, it has always been so problematic that even when Peter Obi became the governor of Anambra State, there were so many laws as in to check security and Peter Obi finally brought security, you know, and Peter Obi finally brought Anambra to a very peaceful state before he finally left office. So, like, we all know what is going on in the Southeast today. Anything that happens, you know, is being attributed to, you know, the ESN or the IPOB, whether it's them or not, because of the agitation that's been going on. And Peter Obi has said that if he's given the mandate, he's going to call everybody to the table, honestly. Not only the Biafrans. Remember, in many parts of Nigeria, there is this ag agitation. People are saying they are not being, you know, they are not feeling the presence of government, just that the government has ignored them and all that. And this has given rise to so many different groups agitating to leave Nigeria. But Peter Obi is saying that, give me the mandate to become your president. I'm going to bring everybody together. I'm going to negotiate with you people. What is your problem? What do you want? And I'll make sure everybody feel belong again. Everybody feels happy, you know, being in Nigeria. And that is what Peter Obi has said. This woman capitalized on that. That is the only topic she knows she could use to bring down Peter, uh, Peter Obi. You know, Peter Obi. But I thank God, Peter Obi is a very intelligent man. He knows how to answer questions. He has no affiliation with ESN or IPOB. And why keep asking him as if he has anything to do with them? We have politicians in the North who were told they are the ones that breeded, you know, uh, Boko Haram. They are the people that helped Boko Haram to start, you know. And today, you see them in places of power. Nobody is even challenging them. Even even the APC vice presidential candidate, we all know how there's this speculation that they were the people that brought about the Boko Haram and today he wants to become your vice president. So guys, I don't know what do you think about this debate. Let me know what to think. Let me know what to think. Thank you. Please, if you are an obedient out there, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends and families. Thank you.